Buenos días. Chilly morning. All right. Let's just keep in our prayers. Omaha and Lincoln people, they were striked yesterday for a tornado. Some communities around there. So we are lucky that we just got moisture this morning, right? So I have, I've been learning about uh, not complaining on the weather. <laughs> if I say it is raining, you will say, well, it's, 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 it's uh, humidity. It's moisture we need, right? If I say, oh, mine, it's, it's snowing. Well, you will say, well, it's moisture for me. <laughs> so everything is a blessing. But let me tell you, this morning is, is one of those mornings I, I would prefer to stay home in bed. And, and, uh, but I have to be here. And did I, have you, did I tell you a story about uh, there was a man, I think I, I share with you this. There was, there was a man who was in his bed. It was getting late. And the, and the, and the wife called him and said, it's time to go to church. It's getting late. And he says, I don't want to go to church today. You have to go to church. You must be in the church. No. I, I have no will. I, I just, I don't want to go to the church. And then the wife was insisting, get up, get dressed, and let's go to the church. I don't want to. I don't want to, the man says. The husband says. And then she says, you have to be there. And they say, why? The husband says, give me just three reasons why I should be there. They don't care about me. They don't love of me. They, they never think about me. So what I should be in the church. And then he said, the wife says, well, first of all, because everybody loves you. Second, because everybody is asking for you. And third one, because you are the pastor. So <laughs> I feel like that today. Sorry. <laughs> Do we have any joys or concerns this morning? We got moisture. Yeah, we got. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a blessing, right? So are we blessed this morning? Yes. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. All right, just get up and share your blessings with everyone else around, please. See? Good morning. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for getting up and coming to our church.
to parents who've adapted, they've been very, very kind. And when we had to rearrange supplies, treats, snacks, and whatever, I truly appreciate it. And my boss is really good about letting me off. <laughs> His answer is always, do I have a choice? <laughs> but anyway, the last few months have been a little bit of a challenge. But parents and grandparents, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We are missing some today. It's You just never know. So, with that being said.
Are you happy? Yes. Then you face hard to show it. <laughs> Would you stand, please, and join me in the opening prayer? God of love plants us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with your strength of Christ, the vine of our everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your spirit, which flows through us all days. Abide in us that we may abide in you and live in your love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So the gathering song will be, there is a name I love to hear, 170. Please be seated and children, come forward, please. This is a children's time. shell, that's one thing, we got the egg yolk, 
But it presents itself as one thing, right? But it's, it's actually three things, okay? Next, we've got a banana here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna cut this banana here. How many forms can water take? Three. What are they? Gas, liquid, and solid. So when we boil it, it becomes a gas. Right now it's in liquid form. And if we freeze it, it becomes a solid and it's ice. So it's three things. But yet it's one thing. Okay? So just like the same way, and we call it the Holy Trinity. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? Can you remember that? <laughs> okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being our Heavenly Father, and sending your Son and the Holy Spirit Sit back. Sit. Go back. Just say, sit back down real quick, guys. I mean, if a little littles want to go back, that's fine, but if you can sit down real quick. Yeah, that's true. Okay, sit down real quick. Okay. What? <laughs> Here's some more. Okay, we have a special presentation to make right now, and we'd like Jackie to come forward. Jackie has been very important to the Christian Education Committee over the years. She has helped in the nursery multiple, multiple times in multiple years, and this year she has graciously volunteered to teach the preschool kindergarten class since January, right? I think she took over in January. Yeah, so we greatly appreciate her and all that she has given to kids in this church and our community. So I just have a little gift certificate for you that says thank you, and then we're also honoring her with a $300 scholarship. Okay, we are going to acknowledge and, and thank these workers for the job they are doing in Christian education. And I'll read the names of the Christian education staff. And would you please come forward to the front of the church? And Lori, maybe you could help with this part as far as you We have a gift, uh, a small gift and as a token of appreciation um, for your work within Christian education. And it takes practically a, a community to get Christian education done. So. We'll, we'll go through these, but realize that everybody, everyone that's named here had an important part in making Christian education go in our church. 
So um, the committee members were um, Erica Zimbelman, Sharissa Stevens, Lori Riger, and myself. And so do come forward, I guess you are. Um, Sunday school superintendent was Mary Lou, doubt it. Adult classes, Pastor Rios did those, led those. Confirmation class was Lee Keller and Pastor Rios. Sunday school teachers were Carla Lampy, Jackie Milliken, um, Erica, Sharissa, myself, and summer Sunday school was Pat Rokes, and will be again this year. MYF teachers and leaders are a huge part of our Christian education, and Grant and Katisha Wiggers led the um, small group study that's here in the mornings, and then the large group was Elise Ross, Kenzie Lampy, Kelly Milliken, and Pastor. Substitutes, um, we could not, we couldn't do it without them. So Melissa Keller was very good to say yes, Sarah Wilson, Denim Fleming, and Lori was a, a good yes also. And nursery workers make everything go well. We are having Sunday school during uh, worship service, and Jackie and Joel were our uh, faithful helpers to um, cover the nursery, along with, uh, we all kind of filled in, but they were the mainstay. So I don't know if everybody came forward. Come forward or you don't get your prayer group. And just a few other things. I don't want to take too long, but um, I want you to be thinking about um, our Christian education workers as they do come forward. And uh, they are committed, they are hardworking, they are organized and caring workers. Um, <clears throat> we, we thank God for each of, of you workers. You have shared your love for God with the children, youth, and adults. And we are thankful you are so faithful to the promise each of us makes at baptism to help raise our children in the Christian faith. We are so glad you said, I will, when asked to be God's hands. So I think as a congregation and church family, we should do a, a round of applause of gratitude for these Christian workers. Somehow we, uh, Christian education skipped, usually in the fall we give our third graders Bibles, and I don't know, somehow we missed it, so we want to do that now before the, um, the term is over. So, Gracie Comer, Kasten Siegfried, uh, Jacob Walls, is he here? Yep. And then, Kaylin, did you get one as a third grader? Yeah, you did? Okay. Is there any third graders that I missed? No? Okay. Very good. All right. If you'll give them a congratulations, that would be great, too. First scripture reading is from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My love one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, 
but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did I yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I'm going to do with my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned or cultivated. The briars and thorns will grow in it. I will command the clouds to not rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are, are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed for the righteousness, but heard cries of distress. The second scripture reading is from the New Testament, John 15, verses 1 through 8. It is resp a responsive reading, so please stand as able. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. You are already clean because of the world I have, the word I have spoken to you. the vine you are the branches if you remain in me i i in you you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing if you remain in me and my words remain in you Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The next song will be 98, To God Be the Glory.
Please be seated. I have too many papers on my hand this morning. I was supposed to say something with the teachers and then uh, I didn't, so many papers I wrote this morning, for this morning. But there is still, we got some uh, jalapeno plants for those who do not have any, so you can take it home. <laughs> Never mind, that's not true. <laughs> but uh, I heard that uh, Cheryl shared this morning that uh, the jalapeno is is negotiating to remain open, so let's keep him in our prayers. Uh, let me share with you. Uh, I, 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 to this morning, I do not have an idea how to start my my uh, message for you. It's been uh, kind of those weird weeks when I cannot find exactly the message for you. I've been struggling, I've been looking, I've been searching, I've been praying, and then uh, this is what the lectionary scripture is for today. So this morning, I, I just, one of those mornings, weird mornings that I'm asking God, what am I doing here? Last week, I went to the nursing home as every Wednesday. And when I was coming out, I saw the Lutheran church sign that is in, in, in the uh, highway. And then I start thinking, what am I doing here? I thought about the pastors from the Lutheran church, maybe the Christian church, the community church, any other church. And they have a pastor a good leader, a good pastor who will preach in their own language. <laughs> no, really, I, 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 I ask God, what am I doing here? Among people who which is not my culture, speaking in their own language, what, what do you want? And what, what do you want from me? What am I doing here? And I, and I just feel really overwhelmed and, and, and humbled because I'm among, uh, I am among you and, and, and you hug me, you embrace me, you welcome me and you make me feel really worthy on my ministry. So I am really want to express my, my grateful words to you and God because coming from a faraway place, being a nobody, just God gave me place, places me among good people in a good place for the last days of my ministry. So I'm really blessed and I'm really humbled for this. So this morning I was asking God, what do you want me to tell the church this week? Why I cannot hear exactly what you want from my church for message this Sunday? So all what I hear, all what I see, it is about the vineyards, or the vine trees, about the vine dresser, about the branches. And honestly, I have no clue what is to be a gardener. So how hard would I talk about vineyards and, and vine trees and, and all these kind of things that you are better well known and trained than me. Probably, if I show you this plan to you, you will be able, from where you are, you will know what kind of plan this is, right? Even if I smell it and it will be a peppermint, I will not know exactly what it is. <laughs> Somebody says to me, when you mow your yard, you have to be aware of the poison ivy. I have no clue. I have no clue what that person was talking to me. I never knew before the poison ivy until I got close to them and then after that I was rushing all the time. 
And they were really hard to get rid of it. So there is a good IV plant and there's a good and a poison IV plant, right? I cannot distinguish in between them. So that's just an excuse for you to show to start sharing with you what is in my heart this morning. John 15 speaks about the vine and of God as the loving vine dresser. He knows everything about the grapes, how they grow, why they need, and what they need. He said that good removes the branches that do not bear fruit and prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they bear more fruit. Every vine dresser knows when the vine is neglected. Seems like uh, there, there is time, there are times when the vines are not producing, so the vine dresser let the branches grow so big that are so heavy, and then they go down to the ground. And then the vine tree is just, the, the branches are just trying to get out the nutrients for them to survive, but they're not really deep, the roots are not really deep enough to suck, to get the nutrients from the soil. So they produce just kind of a bitter, kind of a sour grapes. In order to get those plants to bear a really good fruit, they have to leave the branches, hold them up high, and then start taking away the root wood that is in those branches. Otherwise, they will be sick, they will be infected, and they will have termites on it, kind of a, those little flies that it's in it, and then they rot the trees. So, please excuse me because I, I'm not really skilled on this topic, okay? I'm just trying to figure out how it works. But what I understood is, the Bible says, if the branch do not produce fruit, it has to be trimmed. It has to be taken out, out of the tree. Why? Because it will take some energy out of the tree that will not be okay for the whole rest of the, the, the tree. But also, there is a some branches that are really productive branches. Then, Jesus says, God has to prune them. So, that is not the same thing, right? Cut the branches and prune the branches. Right? What's the difference? Okay. The hard way they, they are treated, right? No regrets. Just cut the branch. Right? There was a bush. A bush tree on, on my former parsonage. Huge one. Has no flowers, just leaves and huge branches, and they fall all the way down, and they just use a, a really big piece of land with those branches and leaves falling down. I didn't like it. Really. I, I, I didn't like it. So one day, mowing the yard, I took the, uh, the trimmer, and I just start pruning. Not pruning, cutting out those branches. <laughs> I just le let some five, four or five branches like this high. They were really high and just looking like this. The trustee's chair came because they, they had parsonages it's in the main street, so everybody who, who passed by can see it. And I assume that the trustees off and on that they, they, they pass by to see how is the person is well doing. So he saw the, the tree of that bush and he stopped by and he knocked and he, at the door and said, what have you done? <laughs> what? Yeah, do you know that that bush will not flourish again and will not produce any, any flowers anymore? Really? Yeah. 
you just skim that bush? <laughs> and I said to him, well, I'm glad. <laughs> it was ugly bush. It was all bushy everywhere. So I didn't like it. So he turned away and said no more. But let me tell you what. That the, the next spring, that bush started showing some flowers again. And they get a really nice flowers and nice leaves and nice strong branches. So when I saw the trustee head again, I said, what about it? Huh? <laughs> Tell me something. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is sometimes we have to go under trials, problems, hard situations for us to understand that there is some things that God has to take away from us. For instance, there was a time when I was a really a, a complainer. I complained about everything. With my kids, with my wife, with my church, with my bishop, with my yes, I was complaining about everything. And you know what? It wasn't a happy time. I was just complaining and complaining, and then God started working with me, in me. Pruning all those ways. The more I complained, the harder could it be. So I decided then to start just complaining. And instead of complaining, be a grateful man. And you know what? It is hard to say thank you all the time. <laughs> Even when things are going wrong, say thank you, Lord. Say I feel blessed. It's a challenge. Because I don't feel okay. I'm not feeling that I, I'm growing, I'm flourishing, I'm, 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 I'm just being what you want me to be. It's not hard, it's not easy to say, thank you, Lord. When you see your kids uh, sick, when you see your wife struggling, when you see all what you love is not going well, it is hard to say, thank you, Lord. I'm feeling blessed. Jesus was telling his disciples he was about to leave, about to let them. And then he was addressing them, telling them, you know what? Don't be really concerned about me leaving you. God will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will lead you, will teach you what you need to know. But I already teach you so you know everything you need to survive. But this is my final advice. You know what? Hard times will come to your life. But don't worry. God is the vine dresser and he will take care of you. Whatever is wrong with you, he will cut it out. Whatever is good, he will provide whatever is need for those branches to be fruitful. But you know what? In the meantime, that plant is suffering. I learned from my mom that the plant suffers when you mistreat it. So, God is the gardener. And what I learned from you guys and my grandma and some others, being a gardener is... Is consuming time work, right? You have to spend time working in your yard, in your garden, right? It is not something you do off and on. It is something you do not do just once a year, right? You have to fertilize the soil. You have to trim the trees and, and whatever you need to do, right? And then... The flowers, the fruits will come after. But you have to spend time working on that garden. It made me think, 
how hard God has to be working 